For three straight days, protesters have filled the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, where a white police officer shot and killed Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager, in August. We wanted to know what's changed in Ferguson since the shooting, so we sent Vladimir Dutier to find out. As thousands gathered in the streets in and around Ferguson this weekend, they were challenged to think about what happens here after the crowds and cameras leave. My name is Frankie with the Mighty 13. A week before the, the protests, we went to see for ourselves and found 24-year-old Frankie Edwards alone, trying to make a difference. If you're looking for a job, let me know ASAP so I can go on and get to working on it. Edwards grew up here and says he's trying to spread the word about free services like job training. In the aftermath of Michael Brown's shooting, there were a lot of political figures that came to Ferguson. Do you think that those people helped to change anything? No, sir. Why not? Because where they at now? Well, had they changed? In Ferguson, nearly half of black men Frankie's age are unemployed. The jobless rate for the city's black males overall is 27.5 percent, four times the national average. For white men here, it's 6.9 percent. And in this town, where 70 percent of the residents are black, five out of six council members are white, as is the mayor. Rita Days is the director of elections for St. Louis County. If these young people truly want to get involved, they will register, they will vote, and they will continue to stay in the process. But just 12 percent of Ferguson's eligible voters participated in the last election, and only 4.5 percent of eligible new voters have registered since Michael Brown was killed. Which might make some wonder, is this the sound of a new drumbeat for change, or just noise. Vladimir Dutier, CBS News, Ferguson, Missouri.